بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه Welcome to our last week on the series uh, studying the uh, pandemic crisis through the framework of maqasid Today we are going to do some synthesis and conclusions uh, over um, what we covered in the last uh, 11 weeks attempting to integrate some of the concept you know bring together uh, ideas and hopefully uh, Uh, see if the concept uh, makes sense. Uh, we will try to uh, speak at uh, a level where everybody can stay with us and and we, uh, inshallah, invite your uh, participation. The agenda today, we will uh, first um, uh, do a brief introduction and uh, then get into the Maqasid component synthesis, followed by a pandemic component synthesis, And then we come back and see how we've uh, how successful we were in applying the Maqasid uh, framework to uh, uh, the pandemic. The, the series was conceived um, in uh, sometime in March, um, as the pandemic was just getting um, uh, to become global. Um, uh, uh, we are reminded here that uh, um, not uh, uh, long uh, as far as December 2019 when uh, this pandemic have started um, and uh, shortly after it was called pandemic uh, it started in china and then it become a pandemic a true pandemic today um, i have for june here the numbers uh, over 10 million people confirmed positive cases uh, in the world uh, over 504 uh, dead Um, um, caused by uh, COVID-19, despite all the uh, lockdowns, despite all, all the social distancing measure and, and, and all of that. Uh, so this situation, as we were thinking about it early in March, we, feel, we, f we felt that um, uh, this would be um, a very good case study to revisit the concept of Maqasid uh, Sharia or Objective of Islamic uh, Jurisprudence. And uh, as any uh, good project should do, uh, we did a, uh, um, an agile a strategic plan and a, a vision and a mission for this series. Some of in this series have missed the first session where we actually talked about what is the vision and the mission. Uh, and the vision of this series was to how uh, dealing with the pandemic situation from a critical Islamic perspective. And the mission is to do that through the Maqasid framework. And this series aims to create an interactive platform to discuss individual and collective responsibility in dealing with the pandemic situation on the spiritual, emotional, intellectual, and social level. So I'll just give you a moment to um, uh, reflect on this vision and mission. At time, uh, some um, uh, members and some um, participants uh, did not know why we keep talking about Maqasid. In reality, Maqasid is the framework that we were trying to understand the pandemic over. So we keep talking about pandemic and we keep talking about the Maqasid because those are the topic of the series. And then we did ask and surveyed um, the audience about those who registered. Uh, we asked them uh, what is the expectation from the course and we've gathered and compiled the, the response into this word cloud. And in a sense, what they're telling us here is that during this vulnerable time, people want to seek understanding, learning collaboration, learning, collaboration, meaning, and transformation from an Islamic maqasid perspective and must take personal and social responsibility to deal with the pandemic crisis and its consequences away from panic, uh, resistance, and conspiracy. So that's what uh, you, the audience, have told us. And uh, we went on to deliver. And uh, on that, we've uh, uh, looked at a uh, few dimensions and roles. Um, and the roles that we're thinking about, roles um, as a worshiper, um, as Abd or Amma, Amatullah or Abdullah, uh, as parents of students, uh, as healthcare providers, Uh, as patients uh, or as um, news consumers uh, or as non-profit organization. So all these uh, roles um, are uh, being um, 
brought to bear in this uh, theory. Um, and also we evoked uh, five dimensions, the intellectual dimension, the spiritual dimension, the emotional dimension, the societal dimension, and the social dimension. So all those um, uh, dimensions and roles were evoked before we started the, the series. Uh, this was a, um, a group effort uh, by many uh, thinkers and specialists and um, other lay people like ourselves uh, who uh, made put a big effort to put together this material on a weekly basis. The um, credit uh, goes to uh, uh, for the conception, a lot of uh, ideas here to Brother Muhammad, um, uh, Brother Hisham, uh, Sister Hajj also, uh, we um, omitted to put her name here. She was also part of the organizing committee. Uh, people who contributed are listed here, Dr. Ahmed Raisouni also, Dr. Jasir Ouda, uh, Brother Khalid Saad, uh, Dr. Yasir Ghannam, Dr. Nazir Khan, Brother Suhaib Ramzan from UK, um, uh, Maryam Berka, Yassin Berka, Sheikh Naveed Aziz, Dr. Mahdi Qasqas, uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, Dr. Shaheed Hassan and Brother Waqar. We wanted to go to the first component of today's um, uh, synthesis and conclusion by uh, uh, shedding some lights uh, on the Maqasid component. Hamid. Thank you, uh, uh, Brother Nurdin, and um, uh, it was a journey. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we are getting at the end, right, uh, kind of in this week. Uh, and uh, this is the Maqasid components. And uh, just to, to make it kind of a little bit concise and understood from our perspective as we went through the material, we are not repeating here. We are more uh, contemplating and see what, what are the takeaways that we can take from here. And there are two elements that I want to highlight here. They are the framework that we tackled as Maqasid, uh, a framework to legitimate the rationality and validity of the context as input. Uh, we claim that in many uh, situations and in many contexts, but the Maqasid did give it kind of place, kind of legitimate place where we are talking. Well, what is the rationale behind these verses? What is the rationale behind this command? And what is the context input, how we can make this command implemented or not? And uh, that was kind of a journey to see how Maqasid give us this um, this uh, justification, give us at least the, the permission to do this type of work from within the perspective of the Islamic uh, teaching and, uh, and, and perspective. The second element that I want to highlight here that we went through, so we went through some level of legitimation and then we, we, we came uh, to uh, tackle a little bit the process to interact with the divine uh, uh, kind of um, material or the text of Quran and Sunnah uh, and and so on uh, from from Maqasid perspective. So the Maqasid gave us the legitimation um, framework and give us the process as uh, and we followed uh, one of the traditional um, uh, process that was framed since Shabbat Ibn Ashur, uh, more recently uh, adopted and, and promoted by many scholars um, Ahmed al and uh, Bin Bi and so on. So uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about these two components. So as we are consolidating our ideas, we are talking about Maqasid in this series for two reasons, legitimate the rationality and the context, and what is the process that they were followed, uh, or they were, that was followed for, to make that, uh, that Maqasid can work. So in terms of perspective of legitimation, uh, I will talk about it in the beginning uh, as first element. So um, the, the legitimation, it covers what, what we mean by the maqasid. And then from within the definition, we can say that the maqasid is calling for that the, the best way to deal with this sharia and with this text is to look at their objectives. Okay, so, and then once we start looking at the objectives, how we can define those objectives, then we come up that, or we came up uh, that uh, the traditional scholars define that the objectives should be tied to the benefit. 
So this is one, this is the first entry. We are coming to the Makassar and then, oh, this is objectives, which is a little bit of interpretation and how you are reading. And then this, those objectives are mostly linked and coming from the root of the benefit, from maslah, basically. So uh, coming to these benefits and we went through the exercise to see what make that benefit uh, kind of uh, uh, compliant to the maqasid. So that was kind of question because the benefit is our world as human being, uh, religious or not, um, uh, coming from specific tradition or not. That's what we are aiming for in a lot of situation dealing with ourselves and with others, with the society and universe. That's the elements that drive us uh, in our context. So coming from Maqasid and we start uh, uh, tackling this material and, and see what, what they said about those benefits. So what type, what, what is the characteristic of making those benefits um, uh, kind of compliant to the maqasid? Um, and then we, we came up with this kind of uh, uh, archetypes that define uh, from, from scholars perspective and from the Quran and some verses and, and, and hadith that when they are talking about benefit, it's not only limited to what is material, what we are used to, 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 to label or not only uh, related to this world. And uh, this is what we can see, and this is how we can prove it is benefit or not. And not only uh, kind of associated with our human as experience, as inheriting our experiences through uh, generation and, uh, and, 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 uh, and between different societies or between different groups. So we start looking at those benefits and we said, Oh, the, the benefit, uh, in order to make it more compliant with the maqasid, for sure, it should have kind of, kind of material benefit, but it should be extended with some spiritual component related to your intention, related to the purity of your heart, related to the, your state of emotion, ghadab or rida, are you angry or are you in acceptance? Are you dealing with this contemplation to move on or are you frustrated and are you resilient? Or this is type of elements that's coming there. As a human experience, we are not focusing only to what is described as divine, this is considered. No, we are linking to extend. Or oh, there are a benefits coming from the divine. In, in, in many verses, when it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, commands, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted uh, in the salat tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar, for example, this is prayer, this is kind of uh, a, not material, it's more spiritual, it's more coming from the divine. This prayer is coming for you to, in order to take to take position, to refute and to push, to push away what is not acceptable. It makes you in the level of awareness about your mission and about what is acceptable in a human being to, to push this uh, this what is and to push away what is not acceptable so to push away what is not acceptable it's mainly attract what is beneficial and uh, so what is uh, to push away what is uh, what is what is not acceptable it's related to your heart it's related to your state with people it's related to yourself as living in this life and what you accept and what not and then we find this this is this is kind of extension to this benefit. So the benefit in the Baqasid could not be framed unless if extended between what's uh, the benefit in, in the Akhirah hereafter uh, related to what is benefit in our dunya. It's the relation between what is beneficial in our material life uh, to what is spiritual and so on. Um, we went through that many sessions, just I want you to keep it in mind because that was one of the big components that was coming at least from the Maqasidi perspective. Uh, so, and this is uh, the, 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 the third element in terms of legitimating uh, the rational, uh, like uh, the, the, it's coming from objective, then it's benefit, this benefit, it has to do with the human experience, with the material, with the individual and the group, with this dunya and thereafter and so on. So this is part of embracing what is the context. It's part of incorporating different dimension and taking, taking um, them in consideration. So that's, that's where, from where it's coming. 
So uh, looking at the Maqasid when the scholars start looking at it and, 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 and uh, defining its, its component, they start looking at it from different perspectives. Some, some of the scholars look at it from the level, what, what are the levels of the maqasid, so this masalih or this benefit, and they said, oh, there are some levels, some, uh, more, uh, some of them are more uh, kind of prioritized or more urgent or more necessary, some of them are not less and so on. So this is the three levels. Some people, they are considered, this is also too specific to this Topic. This is only related to the to the heritage or to the to the wealth. For example, it's not a general. So they are talking about it as 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 specific area, not as general area. And this is the classification in terms of scope. So they are just doing some level of taxonomy, if we can uh, say it, uh, to make. Oh, how this maqasid we can uh, we can look at them so we can understand the complexity behind them at least from their uh, the perspective of the religion and some of them are coming as extended the way we live the way we recognize the ma'ruf or what is recommended and the way we recognize the munkar or what is what should be avoided as human being uh, and some of them are coming as you should consider those ones because they are you may miss with with the uh, the essence behind them uh, and give us some some lessons when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about khamr and misr and this is kind of classical examples even if they have benefits they are not that level to be extended because the benefit in them is less than the harm. So they are some level own. This is not considered. This is denied benefit. We don't want to aim for that. And give us kind of lesson how to deal in the rational level. And this is the second part of the process. So those three elements that we tackled in the beginning, that was the first part of our series. We tackled a little bit the definition and how it's related to the objectives so we can legitimate the rationality and the dealing with the context as, uh, as input for us, dealing and in order to be faithful. That's, that's the aim for, in order to be faithful with the text, in order to be faithful with the message. Uh, and so it was kind of the definition that it was, what are the dimensions, and then it was kind of the categories, just to see them in the picture. Now we are moving a little bit to the process, because our series, it tackled both, it tackled the legitimation and then it tackled the process. So in terms of process, we start defining, oh, those levels that we already classified them, uh, it, 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 it could be either necessities, which is daruriyat or hajiyat, which is the needs or luxuries, which is the tahsiniyat, um, but they are by fields. They, they, we need to re, re, consider their, 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 the, the field from where they are uh, kind of uh, driven. And then we need to look at the, are we, are we respecting all the dimensions in order to make this maqasid, in order to make those benefits compliant to the maqasid? So we start talking, oh, this is the religion and life and intellect and progeny and wealth, and there are level underneath. Some of uh, uh, maqasid are coming and the religion, it could be at least um, uh, recognizing the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the, 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 the book, uh, starting from recognizing his oneness, recognizing his uni unification, we are to hit. So it's coming from there. But if in case you have in the uh, a position that you need to deny it only by your mouth, this is another level. And if you need to, to recognize that dealing with the religion in order to fulfill the obligation, you can fulfill obligation either individual or the group. When you are not able to fulfill it in the group, so it becomes kind of a, a, the second level. So this is kind of a need uh, when you need to be fulfilled. And it was related to the pandemic, for example. Uh, all the discussion that we had about mosques and 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 uh, and, and pilgrimage and so on. Uh, so it's not about stopping the religion as essence but stopping one of the levels because they are the, the, this is the benefit so the benefit came into the plate in order to tell to some text no we cannot go with that and this is the dynamic and this is where the the text is not only guiding in one way the benefit it's also the benefit guiding the way we can deal with the text and this is a uh, this is we need to to to, to to have that in mind because this is the start of the process. How the context and our rationality can stop some text to come into the plate if there are uh, some conditions and so on. And this is uh, this is one 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 book. Uh, 
the second one, we start talking, oh, we have those benefits and we are dealing with the benefits as, uh, uh, as levels, but uh, also we need to come to the same level. Sometimes we need to balance there are some harms and there are some benefits. And uh, Dr. Je, uh, Yasser uh, Ghannami, he, he, he uh, tackled this topic in his presentation. And this is kind of the, the essence that we want to take as take away with us. So you need to balance at one point between your, your, your benefit and the harm. And this is part of your process. You already legitimate as a rationality. You already know how the, the rationality can interact with your, uh, has a role to interact with the text. Now you are, we are uh, going step by step how the scholars make this interaction in terms of flow, in terms of process. And we say that here in, for example, when it comes to the balancing, they are, they are putting it in the process. They are putting, oh, the ruling, you need to consider the ruling. You need to fulfill the reading of the ruling and you need to contemplate what is the behind the ruling and what is the essence of it. And then you need to de decode what is the level of importance or the levels of this masala, if, you, if we, we may talk about it, because we talked about the three levels, the necessities of being, or, 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 or needs or luxuries. And then you can talk about those benefits. Are they means to the greater ends, to the greater benefits, or are they end by themselves? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's talking about to be prepared, uh, even he was mentioning some tools, those tools are not end by themselves. Those tools are just a mean for us. When he's talking about, uh, uh, for example, uh, taqwa, for example, that's one of the ends that make you um, uh, kind of in sakina, in peace with yourself. In, in your relationship with Allah and the universe uh, is talking about some tools and part of them is the sound and then the sound at, so at one point it could be skipped if you are sick if you are in, in, in and so on so this is kind of the perspective of the of, of understanding at least as a process um, there is uh, also the, the elements of the, of the scope there, there is some some benefits and they have wider scope and some benefits they have kind of a, a tight scope or narrow scope scope or, or in them uh, and then you need to to mind that if you are doing this balance and the last one which is is it persistent is it durable is it longevity longevity of that benefit how long you will it will last and this is kind of elements that they brought and this is if we see that we can see that this is human production this is a human um this is how the the scholar they start contemplating by rationality and the context to say oh this the fact that the uh, last more has more impact in time so we may prioritize it and in order to avoid in order to balance between two things um and and and, and, and one of them is just uh, which is consistent between all of them is the certainty how certain you are it's not only zero or one maybe you are 80 percent certain about this one but 20 percent certain about this one and this is kind of subjectivity of the of the judgment and this is kind of the human inter uh, kind of uh, play there um and when we tackle it uh, how, how how we are dealing with these three levels, then we talk about how we are dealing with them uh, when they are kind of contradicting each other or conflicting with each other. Then we start dealing uh, uh, at one with uh, with one of the tools to say the blocking the means and this blocking of the means it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's misused at some point and we want to get into it in order to contemplate about the process how this process of maqasad can help us interact with the text in order to be more faithful. And this is kind of condition. We need to keep that in mind. Whenever there is um, blocking the means, as a human being, we are taking our responsibility as individuals uh, to be faithful with the text. We need to question how far we can go with this blocking of the means or opening the means. And the blocking the means is like if do you have situation that lead you to 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 to, to specific harm, you you're not waiting to the harm to happen in order to avoid it. You are dealing with the situation that lead you to that. So how far you can you can um, use this this process? So there are two conditions there. There are the means that lead directly. You don't want just to say, oh, the pharma. Some pharmacies are selling drugs or are selling um, uh, marijuana or something like that. 
oh, so we need to avoid the finance. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Even if you want to use it beyond whatever religion and so on. So this is kind of the process. If you have it directly related, you need to block it. If it's not directly related, you don't need to block it. And you need to keep it open. And this is, uh, this is kind of... Uh, the teaching, at least from the scholar perspective, as they were contemplating about this process. Uh, so this is one element. And the second element, the means that lead consistently to the specific um, uh, kind of output. So we need to look at the means that are consistently doing that. So the, there is kind of direct and the consistency as as element to help us looking at the benefits and start saying, oh, to, to stop the situation, even if it's permissible, to stop it because it may lead as majority and consistently to that specific harm. So that was one another kind of uh, tool, uh, and that was kind of the, almost uh, uh, the last one. Uh, the, the, the one that comes here, it's just to give us kind of um, uh, perspective. We want to, uh, and this is what we went through in the Maqasid, and you can imagine that's all that what we talked about it in this 12 weeks is only that. It's like part of it is legitimation and part of it is the process. Process is just you have three levels and you have a balance in between them and you have uh, to, to deal with a uh, situation that may lead you to some benefit or situation that may lead you to some to some to some harm and you need to consider the situation by itself and this is um, your perspective what is your perspective to be faithful with the text dealing with the pandemic or dealing with any situation uh, uh, as uh, abdullah as worshiper as somebody who can question and look for the reality or look for the truth at least from the perspective of the nuts so this is kind of the perspective they are perspective that keep you that we need to keep you um, integ having integrative approach and what we mean by that when you are reading the text read it in the light of what benefit can 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 attract and what harm can push and maybe some text uh, you can see the benefit in them and some text you cannot but keep that in mind because this is your entry level to question your, your entry level to to interact with faithfulness this is the faithfulness there and once you have a nurse and you see that it has some benefit and you see that you need to implement it don't implement it blindly look at the right which implemented to keep the benefit alive because that must for example um, throwing the stone in the hedge it was kind of related to specific timing and like in the early in the morning so and so so uh, and and then the you, you we, we the focus for example was they are coming to this one they are not removing uh, because the people they were dying in in in, in practicing this the sharia so they didn't remove the sharia by itself but how we can implement it to keep it beneficial it has some beneficial on it, at least spiritual and and um, uh, coming from the from the practice of the prophet and recommended and so on, and coming from this concept as to be faithful with the nas. So we are not stopping it, but we are looking at the timing, how we can spread it in different times. So even if the timing it was not one of the criteria, but it's coming at the lower level, how we can open it up. And this is how haqiqah, how the context can interact to wide the perspective of implementation. And the second perspective that we want to be aware of and to avoid is just when we are reading the, 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 the text, we don't want to attach it with the benefit in order to make it sacred and in order to make it glorified and abstract. And it's wrong. The text is coming for purpose. You need just to interact with it and to see how far you are interacting with the benefits coming from it. And we saw that in many situations, at least in our reality, and it makes us not faithful the right way to deal with the text. Uh, or, the, or the second perspective dealing with this, uh, with this mindset, once we start um, uh, dealing with our reality in life, oh, please don't bring Quran because you may just, you don't understand it, that you're just playing with the word of Allah. No, please, please bring them and see how you can make uh, meaning uh, meaning of applying and this is just as perspective we want to uh, have it as last elements and it was tackled by our brother 
Nazir Khan. Um, and uh, thank you. That's the Maqasid component. Thank you, Mohammed, uh, for uh, this quick um, wrap up with the key um, stations, uh, Mahatat uh, in the Maqasid. Um, um, I mean, the, the whole truth is um, in, in dealing with um, the Masalih and Mafasid and the uh, balancing between Masalih, Masalih, Mafasid, Mafasid, and Masalih and Mafasid, but also the interaction between the text, the divine, and the context, uh, and, and Stihdar um, bringing the, the objective um, in, uh, in, in the understanding of an application of the, uh, of the text. Um, at this point, we'll uh, open the floor for questions and comments uh, and discussion on this portion. And then we go on to uh, give a, uh, a summary and synthesis of um, the pandemic um, uh, points that we've uh, discussed during the series. Floor is open for everybody. I was, um, as people are t uh, gathering their thoughts, Mohammed, I was just kind of taking notes in the chat of some key points that uh, you've uh, alluded to. Uh, among them, that is, it's as, as important uh, to close the mean as is it to open the mean. Um, and we have to also link uh, the reason of that closing. And when that reason is no longer there, then we have to consider reopening that mean. Um, and we've given during the series, the example of the travel of the women alone um, requiring a uh, chaperone during a time where it was not safe. Uh, but then when things become, travel become internationally safe, then that, 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 that reason that was clearly um, um, uh, uh, qualified in the teaching is no longer there or is very minimum. Um, it's actually the other way around. The man should not go to certain places because it's not safe for them. Um, if you wanted to flip the, uh, or, or actually apply the, the concept in its essence. And maybe a small example here is a uh, historical example in the late uh, 19th century, when uh, the Indian, uh, uh, many areas in the Indian, they have kind of Muslim uh, faqih. I don't remember the name of the sheikh. Uh, but what, what, what happened because of the ta'un uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in Mecca, they, they stopped going to Hajj. And that was kind of uh, part of the, this kind of, Closing the means, going to hell, you bring the ta'un, even in the have is obligatory, you're, you can postpone it as much as you can. So it's not allowed at this time. So what happened? People, the, the sheikh died and everything, move on and so on, and they keep not going to hell. It's just it's just because this this questioning, uh, why we did stop going to hell? And are we allowed this year or not? and how we can keep it alive, bringing this benefit and compliance with the text and what is required, I mean. And uh, that was historical, that's fact. It was kind of almost 50, 60 years that people, none of them went to hell just because Sheikh so-and-so say that it's not allowed because there is some, uh, some harm there. <laughs> that was one of the... Uh... Um. We continue um, with the second part of the talk, and we have a third part of the talk that actually brings the two uh, parts together. And so if you um, uh, think of another question, we can, we're going to have another session for Q&A and discussion. So the, the second part we plan to talk about is the pandemic case studies. If you recall, we used to have Tuesday for uh, the concept of Maqasid and Thursday session for a case study. Um, and and um, uh, during uh, this uh, series, we've tried to look at uh, these uh, case studies on pandemic uh, from an intellectual perspective, but also from an emotional perspective. Uh, we looked at uh, current real uh, situations, but also we looked at future, futuristic uh, uh, situation. What would happen if this continue or what would happen to education in the future what would happen to economy and other things uh, we looked at it from uh, uh, secular but also uh, attempted to look at it from a parad paradigm of a faith base uh, we looked at it as a strategic view but also we were optimistic or opportunistic in choosing the case of the week 
Uh, and so we did reflect before the start of the series on what could be the subjects we want to tackle on the pandemic. But uh, because this is very um, quickly evolving pandemic that scientists uh, are telling you that we are changing our facts and our approaches um, as we learn more. Um, and that's what we say, that's what distinguish between a true scientist and a conspiracy theorist or a fake news source. They usually have fake news. They have usually have final explanation of things that tells you this is not real. Uh, because the facts are changing. We're learning new things. Even when it comes to the medical manifestation of COVID, even this week when you're learning uh, uh, new things, uh, and we're yet to understand uh, how the virus killed. Um, and, and also we uh, wanted to look at uh, original um, ideas and second ideas. Some ideas uh, we thought about and other ideas were available in the literature that uh, we adopted. And, and so I'm gonna now take you through uh, what we've covered during these 12 weeks on cases. So the first week we talked about the hazard uh, of a con conspiracy theories in pandemic crisis. Um, and uh, in that session, uh, we talked about uh, the maqasid benefits in dealing with, the, with news. Uh, we talked about the effect of fake news, uh, uh, rumors and conspiracy theories on public health. Uh, we talked about the psychology of conspiracy theories. There's a whole psychology of the people who believe in it um, and even their, uh, their leaders and imams of conspiracy theories. Uh, psychologists have studied their personalities and their thought process. Uh, we talked about the difference between conspiracies, conspiracy theories, and critical thinking. And because conspiracy theorists like to say that they are critical thinkers uh, and, and that they should not be stopped from thinking, they should not be censored. Uh, but we've seen that uh, um, uh, letting this run in uh, without uh, uh, restriction could cause harm and could kill people. And we've seen how even, how even politicians are putting fake news that have killed a lot of people because the masses are following what their leaders are telling them. Uh, second week, we talked uh, about an important area of the pandemic crisis, which is outcomes and scenarios, and both positive and negative. And we uh, alluded to six dimensions for uh, thinking uh, through the outcomes and scenarios. One aspect is the healthcare and, and the medical area. The second uh, aspect is the intellectual area. Uh, the third is psychology, uh, the social aspect, the governance, uh, the schooling and education, the microeconomics and global affairs. We ask the question of uh, what will the next six months bring? And, and this was a decision-making process where futuristic, uh, um, uh, probabilistic uh, calculation is done to say, okay, um, if the, the number of positive tests uh, is this much, and if, they, we if, we don't, if we don't have a medication, and if we don't get uh, or a, a, a vaccine in time, if the trust of the people to government is weak, what happened versus if those things are existing. So if we have a vaccine, things will be different. If the people trust their government, things will be different, etc. So those are very important discussions um, that are critical to engage in for us to mitigate the outcome of the um, pandemic crisis. The third week, we uh, talk about response of different religions, uh, religious groups, and uh, we watched a, a video for a, a mystic spiritual perspective view. Um, uh, we uh, looked at uh, religious views, uh, concept of uh, this is a trial uh, versus this is punishment from Allah. Allah did that to the Chinese because they were uh, abusing the Igor, uh, but short, short after Mecca was closed, Medina was closed, Quds was closed, Masajid was closed, Jum'ah was closed, and you go on and on and on. We could not bury people proper barrier. And who, who's been punished and who's not been punished. Uh, we talked about uh, religious uh, internal affairs management and uh, uh, we, we also uh, looked at certain fatwas that were issued around the, the uh, Nawazil or the new situation of, um, of pandemic. 
And some of them uh, were very uh, problematic, let's say. And we did some critique to uh, some of those. Among them, um, the example where a sheikh was asked, when we have scarce um, uh, medical equipment and respirators, uh, who should we prioritize? And he said, well, to, it, it, he mentioned something about a tala'ub, that is uh, to bring corruption into who get access. So he said, first come, first serve, um, showing that this sheikh does not understand how triage work. And, and for that, actually, in a future session, we've, uh, we've had a case where Mariam spoke about this whole, uh, uh, how do you handle scarce um, medical equipment from an ethical perspective. The fourth week, uh, we did the, an application of Maqasid gen general framework on pandemic, on pandemic case. And uh, Dr. Jasser Ouda uh, managed two sessions. Um, uh, the first session he uh, exposed to us his framework, his methodology, his philosophy on Maqasid. And in the second week, he used that uh, framework um, uh, to study the pandemic case. Um, and he did a, a live, trans, uh, a live uh, demonstration using uh, tools that he used uh, on this kind of studies. He intended also in the second part of the session to uh, critique some of the Fatawi, uh, but uh, the uh, session was so engaged in this first part that we never got to critiquing Fatawi, which he alluded to in his discussion. The fifth week, we talked about the concept of pandemic benefit and harm dimensions um, and uh, um, we talked about the decision making process we talked about uh, the divine and human experience um, uh, we talked about the accepted versus denied benefit we talked about psychosocial benefit and we talked about the individual versus group um, uh, uh, benefit and harm dimensions uh, the sixth week um, we uh, studied pandemic and the five necessities and beyond uh, the, the, the five, as we studied, there are many other ones that came uh, over the uh, history since Al Ghazali's time. Um, and in that, uh, Brother uh, Imam Juhari um, talked to us about slavery and freedom and the five. And he um, had the hypothesis that Iblis himself had whispered to the slave master that he should devoid. Uh, the slave from their five necessities, from their life, from their, um, uh, uh, their, from their religion, uh, and all, all from their wealth, from their progeny and all. And, and he nicely uh, talked uh, on that. And, and we brought uh, Mariam to uh, tackle the, the issue that I alluded to earlier, which is uh, the fact that uh, we have this light um, simplistic uh, fatwas uh, by even by not just by individual mashaykh but also by majma fiqhi uh, that uh, have uh, failed to grasp the complexity of the issue. So we ask just to give an example on how um, these uh, issues are dealt with in the modern bioethical uh, arena. And so Maryam talked about the ethical, legal, social implication of rationalizing scarce medical equipment. And um, I also spoke on that session on uh, environmental necessity and how to inspire positive environmental uh, behavior uh, during the time of COVID-19 because COVID-19 have excited and ignited a lot of uh, existing big issues, as you know, the racism, the environmental issues, the uh, uh, equity, uh, economical issues, and unfairness, the uh, health disparity, and the like. Uh, the seventh week, uh, we talked about COVID-19 between individualism and collectivism, and we uh, made the case that uh, this is a global uh, pandemic, and it would re require a, uh, a, a group effort uh, to confront it. And, and so we've seen some very positive uh, examples of that, but we also saw some negative examples of that would happen with uh, Italy in, with, and the European Union. They didn't come to the rescue of Italy when Italy was in the mix of uh, the, 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 the pinnacle of the crisis. Uh, um, um, and we, talk, we said that using the pandemic as a transformative force to move forward 
uh, as a global community on all aspects, not just the, the, the uh, pandemic and health areas. Uh, the, the eight week, we talked about classification and, char and characterization of the impact of COVID. And we talked how we should be balancing benefit and harm. And in the example we've looked at is the child health um, uh, and the plot of the senior uh, in the senior homes and, um, and how that may uh, be conflicting with the, the business uh, interest. Uh, in week nine, we talked about closing the mean for future pandemic. How do we avoid or at least mitigate? Because we, we can't stop uh, pandemics. By the way, I just uh, sh uh, posted today uh, that in China, they're dealing with the potential new pandemic, uh, um, uh, swine flu virus that have the hallmark of potential pandemic uh, if we're not acting quickly. And so this is the new uh, uh, normal now. We will have pandemic. Can we mitigate them? Can we open certain means and close certain means to make sure that we mitigate them well? And so we talked about, uh, because uh, uh, pandemics and wars, they come to just amplify an existing situation. So economical disparities exist. Health disparities exist. Uh, lack of political in engagement. We talked about business architecture and how it should be revised, and Mohammed did a very good job in that. Yasin talked to us about uh, antibiotic resistance, which is another big one, uh, a situation where if we are keep abusing the use of antibiotics um, uh, off-label and without uh, following uh, uh, proper uh, instruction of, of, of a physician that eventually we're going to become resistant to all available antibiotics and we will die uh, in, in waves uh, out of the infections that we couldn't uh, find uh, an antibiotic for. And Maryam spoke about the health disparity and uh, Brother Soheib talked about uh, the economic uh, uh, aspect of, uh, of this. Um, number 10, week 10, we talked about, uh, we proposed an ethical framework uh, for the pandemic using the case of reopening schools as a case for a framework. And, and we reviewed um, an example of a, an ethical framework using a Canadian framework, the Canadian government framework on uh, uh, what are the uh, criteria that should be um, uh, considered in reopening schools and it's not as simple as uh, all the numbers are down and the parents need to go back to work so we need to have a babysitting uh, for for uh, uh, full-time babysitting for the students but it's actually more complex than that uh, um, and uh, the idea here is for us to start being intentional in um, uh, in designing and executing these ethical frameworks um, I mean, watching and observing what's happening around the world, you get the impression that uh, that people are not using any framework. It's haphazard. They try something. They follow. Uh, they propagate fake news, especially in uh, in the southern country here, where southern states are uh, have have played with death and with COVID nineteen and opened up very early. They never really shut down or locked down in certain states. And now they're scrambling to close in and, and, and uh, as the numbers of deaths and, and cases are astronomic now, uh, exponentially increasing. In number 11, week 11, we talked about the fate of capitalism in the COVID-19 era. We had very interesting uh, conversation there. Uh, Brother Soheib talked about uh, the whole uh, concept of uh, capital versus uh, wealth taxing uh, and that, uh, that uh, should we be uh, taxing uh, capital rather than wealth. Uh, we talk, he talked about the inequity in wealth. Uh, Maryam talked about uh, health disparity and health care when it comes to uh, how it's impacted by capitalism. And Yassin talked about problematic of the young people today uh, which is student loan debt, uh, which is uh, astronomic now in, 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 in scope. I mean, uh, uh, gone. I mean, many of us have uh, grow up in, 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 in a socialist uh, countries where undergraduate education was free. I mean, all the way to the undergrad, you didn't have to pay a cent. Actually, they will give you a scholarship to uh, a, a modest scholarship to 
uh, uh, to survive. Whereas in North America, especially in the US, uh, this is a big problem. And of course, if you have a physician who comes out of medical school with half a million dollar um, uh, loan and the interest is being accumulated, what kind of ethical doctor are you going to have? What kind of professional are you going to have when they're actually racing against time to pay back that, uh, that debt? By the way, for those who don't know, you cannot uh, declare bankruptcy on, on, on a student loan. Uh, student loan does not go away. You have to pay it. Um, so those are the uh, uh, topics and cases that we've covered. And I've just captured here for you what I just told you, so I don't mean to spend more time on here. But these are the uh, basically the, the areas that we've tackled and covered. And uh, before we started the, the series in the introductory session, we've listed certain questions that are being raised in the pandemic um, um, uh, crisis. And what I highlighted in green are questions that uh, we've covered in, uh, in the series here. Um, effect of rumors and conspiracy theories in combating pandemics, economic risk of lockdowns versus uh, herd immunity, uh, you know, how do we balance between the economy and, and, uh, and we see how Sweden have experimented with that, but that didn't work for them either. Uh, who uh, to say first? And we talked about this ethical dilemma. Uh, this the fourth point, we didn't really get into it, which, which is the, the habit of certain people to any time they see uh, a big event uh, such as uh, the, when we were going from, I was in Baltimore as a fellow then between in 1999 uh, in December, and everybody was worried about Y2K um, and, and people start talking about the end of the world. Well, every big event, people are talking about the end of the world. And this is the best of them. Uh, it's 2020, it's COVID-19. Um, and, and so, but, but we didn't cover this, but it is something that is very annoying, let's, uh, let's say, especially when you see Mashaikh who spent so much time talking about Alamat uh, Sa'a. And and um, and, uh, and the Masih Dajjal and all that. I have actually was debating with a brother of mine, uh, of our Mashaikh, who, and I told him why, why we keep talking about this. Isn't it suffice to say that I believe in the hour, that there is such thing in the hour, uh, and that we say in our Tashahud um, that we uh, seek refuge from Masih Dajjal? That is enough uh, for us. Uh, to, to count how many buildings, uh, um, uh, uh, skylines were raised all over the world and keep tracking these things. It's just an obsession that doesn't have any practicality and it doesn't help anything. Um, all the greens we've covered, the yellow we touched base, uh, how the world uh, will look after the coronavirus pandemic. We didn't really get into it in detail, but we touched base a little bit on how education will be. Um, how certain uh, economies may change, uh, but this requires actually more work and more uh, um, uh, study. Also, uh, is the pandemic will change human intellect and behavior? Um, what the people have uh, actually since the time we wrote this, I've seen uh, some article just like last week, an article talking about uh, that people behavior is not going to change. Uh, people uh, default back to their habits. And especially when it comes to social distancing, already we're breaking rules left and right. Um, and, and so, uh, in a sense, uh, we've uh, touched base. Seventy-three percent of the of those uh, 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 points that we say we want to talk about. Twenty percent of them we partially talked about, and uh, and the rest uh, we didn't get to. I'll stop here and uh, I'll give the mic back to Mohammed uh, to get us into the third uh, phase here of the discussion. Sure, uh, thank you, uh, uh, So inshallah, just uh, as we went through this, uh, this journey and I would like you to um, recall what was the vision. The vision is to tackle or to, to deal with the pandemic from the Maqasid perspective. So that was that we were aiming for. We were aiming a little bit uh, big and we want to achieve that and how we can make the Maqasid as framework, uh, help us navigate the pandemic, help us uh, coming up with good understanding and good position uh, dealing with this pandemic, but also helping us to uh, be kind of um, um, game player 
not only looking and and watching and and so on so let's let's get into that question how far we went in our achievement dealing with that um so it was two uh, two aspects on it and especially i want to link it not to, to the maqasid as a whole but we choose one uh, one approach of the maqasid and that's the approach that we we used to have in uh, at least as understanding and we dealt with it in 2014 so we use it we use that framework that maqasid framework or perspective which is traditional perspective of the maqasid and we said oh this is the maqasid that we want to use and then what we end up and i will get into the details that we have a positive and active interaction um, dealing with the context and dealing with our faithful or with our divine prescription or the text or with our relation with the divine at least there are some level of positive and active interaction there but we want also to see that um, there are also some negative and passive interaction there so that we were not able to interact positively, that we were not able to change, that only the changes coming from there to us and so on. So I will get into those details. So in terms of positive, and that's, uh, that's at least, uh, that's what we notice and what, uh, uh, it's debatable. Uh, I'm inviting you to interact and to uh, diffuse what is the argument there and so on, the rationale behind that. That's our interaction with, with, with all of you here. Uh, and one of the elements that we saw that uh, by bringing the Makassar as perspective to legitimate this rational and to legitimate the context inputs in, in terms of um, uh, well-framed perspective, traditional perspective anyhow, uh, that's uh, one of the positive there is valuing that context and this rationality is like we can and uh, we see that, oh, we cannot deal with the situation just by some uh, literalistic reading of our text or some disconnection from the context in order to bring the text of, uh, in the life and so on. So we said, oh, there is necessity to look how we understand the text and to look how we are to understand the context. We cannot just claim it's punishment or trial. We cannot just claim that the healthcare is only first come for serve or only the elderly or only the, the kids or some simplistic approach that we, we, we may end up having. There is some complexity in the context and without getting down and in the ground to look at the context as is, we may fail miserably at least uh, to not be faithful to what we are claiming. So at least it was some valuing, that valuing the context input and the rationality um, in approaching that the human benefit it cannot go go away if we want to achieve some Sharia as objectives. The second positive outcome that we 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 uh, handle we see that we uh, we achieved uh, dealing with this the different uh, um, kind of uh, perspective that we tackled uh, that valuing shared principles and interaction with other disciplines in looking holistically as a human being, holistically as life holistically as universe. And we start, uh, one part of this valuing this shared principle is seeking how this perspective is aligned with what we believe in. And looking at other material and we bring it in, looking at other perspective and we see how it's valuable. We look at the fake news and we find already some other people, not only in the, in the perspective of, uh, of uh, divine or spiritual text, they are already have a process how to deal with this, um, uh, dealing with this fake news and so on. So we are embracing and valuing what is shared with other people, what's shared in the arena of the intellectual um, uh, kind of debate and the arena of the human experience. That's one, 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 one second area, at least, of positive interaction. And we see that without doing that, there is no maqasid. How you can deal with maqasid is just coming up with your own benefit in your own corner. You cannot even be competitive. You cannot even be 
close to what should be that. So that's 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 value valuing that the input of others. We 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 feel the, the necessity of it. And the third element, as positive here, is bringing into the plate principles that aligned with the Islamic perspective. From time to time, when we are we have kind of chance and and we have kind of perspective, we see that some principles could be revived in these challenges, and we bring in the principles and. But at least it was kind of positive that we can bring something not only from outside to inside, but also from inside to outside as principles, as simple as they are. Dealing with the, 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 the second part, and this is we need to be uh, critical and we need to be a little bit uh, kind of uh, um, realistic too. So uh, so it's, it's about what is the negative or what is not... Um, well, good um, interaction with 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 the with the pandemic situation coming from the Makassar. So we we feel that we had the the, the, the we have kind of uh, adopting this Makassar framework as the traditional framework as we, we keep saying. This is we, we want to, to 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 give it a context because it's not all the Makassar. There is Makassar and there are different framework and this is one of the framework that we adopted. There is some weaknesses of this framework in challenging the status quo in dealing with the pandemic. All the time we are looking at the situation and we are looking at what is coming there and we are bringing in the principles to justify that. We are bringing the principle to say, oh, that makes sense. We are coming as weak there. We cannot even talk that, oh, it doesn't, we need, we need we, this is even better than that. We, 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 we couldn't find outside of that position using the framework as it. Um, the, the second kind of uh, issue that we, we, we dealt with as we were dealing with bringing the case study and we were at least, and I can give you this insight from within the committee and dealing with this issue. We tackled the concept in Tuesday, coming to Thursday, it's really headache and it's really struggling and it's really looking how the Makassar could play a role here and could not play a role just as a title, we could not even play a role as just a label. We don't want that. We're sick of that. We want some Makassar that comes there as, as one of the components that put us uh, in, 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 in contradiction with ourselves and see how we can struggle with that. So that was kind of limitation of the Makassar in bringing valuable contribution. So the best case scenario that we, we try to do at that time is just bringing some principles and maybe we brought them in three, four weeks. That's, and the last one it was done, uh, the, it was uh, last week when we had this um, student loan and um, economic uh, equity and so on. We brought that kind of principles when it comes in general principles, soft principles when it comes to dealing with the perspective of the world, with the perspective of how Islam is looking at um, at society uh, with uh, the equity uh, and, 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 the, and the world perspective there. So the last items here as weaknesses here uh, is Makassid uh, was taken uh, and we saw it at least we were trying to make it not the case but we couldn't make it better um, uh, and that's so what that element is making Makassid the, 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 the role of just validator or justification justificator it's just we are justifying with with the Makassid this is, oh, this is good benefit. Oh, this is a maslaha. Oh, this is how we are dealing with the balancing. Look at that. We have this issue and we have this issue. And this arm is bigger than this one. So we are, we are doing something so superficial uh, that the makasa, the process, that didn't help us. Um, and, um, and they want to share that, that struggle. Uh, with everybody here as we were dealing. And this is kind of case study, how this Makassar as this framework is um, maybe has some issues in it, maybe it's issue in us, uh, how far we put some effort in order to make the right case, how smart we are in order to make the right call, how specialist we are in order to make the right framing. That's, that's also in the plate and we want to keep it in mind. So as a conclusion here, uh, so, 
as bright side and and we want to keep it in mind too that's uh, that's uh, we were aiming to bring maqasid in this pandemic in order to be more faithful with the divine in order to make the divine more active more present present in our life more present in our perspective or more present in our day to day and the way we want to look at the issues and challenges we have and uh, partially it was kind of a uh, kind of achievable at least and this is the green side there that maqasid as legitimator uh, of uh, bringing the rationality and the context input and and sharing the principles and look at the other disciplines and so on uh, was more active and valuable um, uh, than maqasid as a process as we saw just i want to remind you what what we how we framed the session this is a legitimation section and there is a process section so the legitimation section was more bright than the process. The, the, the process was uh, kind of uh, came short to change the current status, the status quo, as we call it, or the perspectives that we have, or the processes, or, or any, or the contribution in general. The, 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 the side that we, uh, we, we feel that there are some, some issues, at least as conclusion here, that Makal said as a door to revive the value and appreciate the divine presence uh, in the pandemic as game player, uh, we, we couldn't make it a case. We tried, we see how we can look at it. There is lack of material anyways. Even the contribution of the scholars is not that vibrant, it's not that uh, in life. And we, we see that there are some poverty in the material by itself uh, and, and the weakness in the approach by itself. And um, make the maqasid at least as uh, as um, as um, uh, support to drive uh, for this type of 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 of, um, of target it may be questionable in the state as it is or in the framework that we adopt and so on so this is kind of uh, the pandemic situation was weak and more apologetic uh, and we didn't kind of see uh, see it as game player in the way that helped us as a Muslim to contemplate and bring the divine with the challenged uh, issues. It helped us to some point to to legitimate uh, the rationality and interact with it positively, but it didn't go farther than that. Zakallah um, Mohammed, we've um, we're able to present to you. A, uh, a summary sentences uh, and some conclusion both on the maqasid the traditional framework that we've adopted in this series and um, also the um, uh, cases that we've covered and um, our areas of success and failure um, and as any good scientist will do when critiquing a paper you will have to actually always come up with uh, some critique to improve and for us to know in the future where we go from here. Um, at this point, uh, the, the floor is open for everybody on all aspects of today's presentation. Um, and uh, looking uh, for some dynamic um, uh, interaction, inshallah. While uh, brothers and sisters are thinking, um, formulating their questions and comments, Mohammed, if we, um, from what we have learned of uh, Jasir Ouda's uh, um, framework as an example of frameworks out there, uh, the few, I mean, I don't know how many exist really beside his work, because uh, the, the little we know uh, and we read, there's not much uh, in it when it comes to, f uh, you know, uh, a modern framework to the maqasid, and uh, uh, we don't claim that we've... Uh, We've uh, reviewed everything, but if we have adopted the, his framework, um, uh, would you have uh, thought that uh, we would have had better success or what we've seen from his uh, application um, was still limited? Uh, just to share my thoughts here, and thank you for bringing that one, because we keep saying that we the framework that we adopted is the traditional one, which is framing the maqasid as maslaha and maslaha as levels, and levels are enumerated and areas are defined and so on. And this is the tool that you have only to balance between them in some traditional level. 
and the level to um, to push the situation that lead into some type of consequences. Uh, so this is kind of framework. We see it and we, we whatever book of Maqasid in traditional kind of um, approach, and this is maybe 80, 90 percent, I'm not sure, we are not scholar, we're not specialists, I don't want to claim something that I'm not, um, I cannot prove. So, but this is whenever you type in the internet and you can look at it, but this kind of majority framework, whatever you look at it as material, most of them are talking about three levels, most of them are talking about the royal, most of them are talking about this fiqhi perspective looking at the maqasid. So the maqasid should be framed, should be connotated with maslaha, and this maslaha should be assessed in terms of hukum. So this is kind of fiqhi perspective, and we, 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 we feel it. We feel it in the way you read the maqasid, it's coming from this essence. Now, uh, the, 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 the Jasser proposal is to get out from the fiqhi perspective and linking it with the, the source and, and, and framing it in, in, in seven, seven dimensions that he talked about. So uh, it's, he's trying to make the, 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 the divine talking to us as per our time with new perspective or at least fresh perspective not new with fresh perspective by linking us to the uh, to the to the book and getting a little bit behind those guidance that get us stuck and imprisoned in this in this uh, in this cage the, this is the one this is the second this is how you can look at it and i think it's promising but it's worth it to be tested to say how far it could make a difference bringing it as the view of Maqasid to make some level of a game player. And we would like to, to experiment that. It's like, I'm, I'm so eager to see if we have a chance to take this series again. Uh, it's not because there was some level of failure, because Alhamdulillah, we see how it could fail. We see how it could be hard. Uh, I would like to see other framework and how they really they could help. Uh, I think it's promising. That's my humble kind of assessment of it, and based on my uh, little knowledge of his framework and his methodology, um, uh, connecting uh, the the circle of reflection, connecting it with universal perspective and human experience as uh, as a layer of dealing with the reality, and connecting it with linking the concepts so you don't get stuck with the ideology, how they are framing the concepts. I think it's really, I, I think it's promising. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, for those who did not attend the week of um, um, Dr. Jasser Jouda's framework, um, uh, you can contact us and we could share with you uh, that framework. It's also, it's on, uh, on YouTube. The session is on YouTube. I, I, would, I would strongly uh, advise that you listen to it if you missed it. Um, Dr. Qandouz. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, salam. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for uh, the tremendous effort you obviously put in, uh, in organizing this, um, these sessions. I mean, uh, I learned a lot as someone who has n uh, no knowledge whatsoever in this area. So uh, my question, um, if you could go, uh, Sayyid Muhammad, uh, could you go to the, your last slide, please? I don't know if, just the one before this one. Uh, yeah, th this one. I think this is, in my opinion, the most important slide in the whole um in the whole talks no disrespect meant what i mean is it, it, it summarizes the conclusion uh, um as the the as per the title it synthesizes all the knowledge or the conclusions that we can take from previous um presentations my question is based on these two conclusions what practical steps do you think you could take next to to uh, uh, further develop these the challenges that you you put in on that slide and the the benefits of obviously also sure mm, thank you uh, uh, brother mustafa um, you, you are you are you are now my friend for 
uh, 12 <laughs> weeks right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We become friends even if we don't know each yeah, other. Anyways, absolutely. if I saw you in the outside, I cannot recognize you. But if I hear your voice, I can recognize you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and thank, thank you for the input here. Uh, so yeah, just it's it's really it's really um, a deep question because I was writing the conclusion and I was kind of um, uh, facing my fear. Uh, that we are claiming as a Muslim, but Islam can bring some um, quick solution and can help us to be uh, closer to our uh, kind of faith. Just give it some time. Just look at it. Just just give it a try. And uh, when you give it a try and you do the whatever effort and you take one of the framework and you, I'm not saying that we put. Uh, infinite effort. I'm not saying that. We put whatever we could. Uh, maybe we were lazy sometime too. That's so we can recognize that. But I can talk into myself and to some extent to the brother Nordin. <laughs> I know what, what is what your your effort. Your <laughs> we 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 tried. We tried a lot of things to making it um, accurate and to making it close to what we are aiming for and, uh, and, and, and getting to this level of, um, uh, of conclusion is one part is reconforting us. That yeah, there is one area that we can uh, uh, keep, keep, I mean, um, looking at, uh, but we need to be more realistic. The Islamic perspective need more work to be more effective, uh, to bring only the Muslim. I'm not talking about to bring a human being. I'm not talking about that, just to, 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 to be more realistic. To be more realistic, at least as a Muslims, to frame properly and to give them the right insight to challenge their situation, to challenge how they can move ahead, uh, you need a little bit more work. And uh, in the light of that, as, as uh, as Addison said about his experiment about the electricity and trying the lamps and stuff, he said that I at least I have 1,000 ways that I will not try again. <laughs> That's one, and for us, it's at least we know the limitation that, uh, that we, are, we, we are getting from the framework without blaming only the framework. We, we keep some blame to ourselves, our limitation, we're not specialists and so on. Um, but at we can tell that some level based on our competence and based on what we are we understand i will not recommend to go to the traditional maqasid to aim for that type of 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 of, uh, of goals uh, that's at least one of the conclusions there i would like people to try different frameworks as as um, uh, i mean uh, not really adopted by by a lot of people as as fine. It's fine. It's fine. It, it, as long as you are, you're looking at different framework and you are getting to the conclusion to see what works and what doesn't work in empirical way. And I learned from that. It was it was good learning. We we did the same series in 2014 uh, by glorifying Maqasid. Now we are coming with 2000. Uh, with 2020, and we look at the Maqasid more, um, more realistic way. And if we are talking about Maqasid, this is buzzword, and it's not that operationalized science, and you need a lot of work to making it at least helpful for the Muslims before we start even talking about how we can challenge the human being contribution and so on. Um, that, that's my humble thought at this time. I'm not sure if I answered answered your 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 perspective, but that's what I was thinking about. Thank you. Do uh, so, you have any uh, addition to that? Um, no, no. Um, I was just thinking. Um, um, I have no answer. I'm just thinking. Uh, what what directions? What um, other aspects could be added? to further develop the field or what actions, what uh, epistemological uh, actions could be taken to, to make it more, more developed in the future? 
Dankjewel, Geren. Um, uh, Hisham, I'm going to come back to you, but first, uh, Sharif. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khair, brother, for this effort. Uh, my, my question or my point about uh, the different levels of uh, audience, let's say the university students, the t Islamic teachers here in general, the people who are working with uh, masajid or imam, and this kind of uh, dua, if we offer this kind of efforts and uh, lectures to them, maybe we will get some feedback and it will lead us to develop the maybe the next step. And maybe the next step here, it will be uh, divided to two sessions, the one for the private, which means to develop the, the theory and the practice, and one just for general, general questions to reach the wide public or the wide range of audience, because still, to reach the wide range of audience, still this is a challenge point. Jazakumullah khair. Well, I mean, this is, uh, this comment, uh, Sharif, keep coming back, uh, and we are struggling with it. Um, that is, um, how do you balance between being um, faithful to your vision and mission in this series uh, versus diluting the material to the point where it loses its essence? And Muhammad can tell you that every week we're fighting about this. And as we prepare the material, um, how do we um, make it um, for... But, but I, uh, in my humble experience, um, the issue is not just to break down the concept to lay people. That's, that's, that's an important aspect that we need to work on. But, you know, most people... Most people that talk about maqasid, I'm not talking about the specialists of maqasid like Dr. Raisuni and Jasir Auda and the few that we know, right? Um, most people that talk about maqasid, you know what they're going to talk about? The five necessities. They, 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 maqasid for them is the five necessities. Even in the traditional framework, they only know about it, the five necessities. So... Uh, bring in mashayikh in a private setting and whatever. We've done that. It's not like we didn't try. We've invited them. Uh, even in this session, in this series, we invited the um, sheikh. We invited the best one that, you know, a couple of them that actually interact uh, historically, um, they positively interact, they contribute, they make an effort. Other people don't even make effort. They brain uh, they brainwashed uh, in a certain way, in a certain um, uh, learning they learned, and they're not willing to uh, step out of that uh, boundary. And so you cannot do anything with that. Um, uh, the, the other point that I wanted to uh, allude to, Muhammad said, well, we're not specialists, but that's not the only problem that we're dealing with. We're not specialists, and we are not having the time to dedicate for this. I mean, we're giving literally our leftover time to work, to read, to prepare this material. And, and any science, if you don't give it uh, all yourself, you cannot be um, uh, innovative in it. Now, anybody who um, look at what we're doing, knowing that we're not specialists, knowing that we're doing, we don't have, we're not full-timers and uh, respect what we do. And, and, and by the way, uh, I'm not going to hide this from you, I think, but uh, so far, at least a couple of the people that are uh, active in the field have approached us and say, well, you guys have some good material. We, we like to collaborate to write it up and publish it and take it to the next step. We want you to be part of some... Um, some uh, groups that are working on these things um, uh, because that tells you that they don't have enough people who are dedicating themselves in the field and, and, and innovating in the field. Um, even when we bring the, the known mashayikh who are writing books or the scholars or the professors, we don't go far, right? We, 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 we don't go farther than criticizing the, 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 the study school. There's very little um, framework proposed out there. Hisham. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, 
So uh, I, I believe uh, 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 regarding the effort was done in this series, and uh, it was a tremendous effort. Now we're suffering with uh, <laughs> with the question of uh, that Dr. Gandus put forward is what is next, and we always suffer with that when you feel that you learn something. And you know, I, I am I did the series as Muhammad said. We did it in 2014. We were happy with it, and we were excited about Makassid. And uh, with the format, we uh, it was done this time uh, by you and Mohammed uh, mainly. Uh, it 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 brought it brought forward. You know, we see the limit of that uh, what we call traditional Makassid, and now we're we're asking what is what is the next step? And always, this the next step is is uh, uh, is a painful question, and. Uh, um, is the is the question of the change how how we can change how we can contribute how we can put forward and all stuff and i think we're gonna go into the change dynamic and the science of change and um and i think uh, that's another question for for another time but but i i believe um in my humble experience just for myself um when you understand the topic um Say, for example, we did it in 2014, and when we did it this time, it was a huge difference. We understand, we understand now what is maqasid means, what is the limitation of the framework, uh, what is the limitation of um, you know, the traditional one, if we're going to call it traditional one, what is the, tradi- what is the, contri- the contribution of the, of the, uh, the uh, previous scholars. And we can see right now that... Uh, this is a huge issue that we have in the Ummah right now. Uh, we don't have a lot of contribution. All we're working with is with the uh, with fifth Hijri, sixth Hijri, seventh Hijri, eighth Hijri contribution, and it's a it's an amazing thing. Um, uh, the last three years, four years, uh, brought some new light to Makassar, for example, but we're far away from from uh, from what we need, and we can see. Uh, from the pandemics, uh, you know, uh, case, ca- you know, case. When we talk about, uh, um, when we talked about complexity uh, of the of the topic, when we 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 talk about economy, education, or stuff, uh, we can see that this Makassar framework it doesn't help us a lot, um, and we need a new tool. And I think what uh, Dr. Jasser Jasser presented to us, um, we don't know. What is this limitation? Because you need to try it. You need to, uh, um, uh, between bracket, play with it before you start looking at, uh, you know, uh, um, I believe he, he tried to answer some questions in it. But I, you know, the next, next level for me is to try things, make things happen. Um, uh, you know, this needs small project here and there. Um, widen the group. And I think, that's where the where the next step is. Um, I know it's sometimes defeating because we know that it needs money, it needs effort, it needs people. But if there are people that are asking what is the next step is, I believe it's the involvement and it's work for me. Salam Um Mustafa uh, has a small comment and we come back to you, Mohammed. Um, Salam alaikum. Um, I just want to... Um, react quickly to what uh, the brother just said. This process of what's next uh, might might be painful, but it it's painful good. So we should, re- should you should really consider it in that way. I mean, the other the other question of um, um, waiting for s- specialist or s- religious scholars to to get involved or you should not uh, wait because if they are not doing it right now that means you are the ones who are who feel the need and who have who think have uh, uh, have uh, uh, stumbled on some g- good ideas that you could develop so you are the ones who, are, who will do it you can't wait for others but uh, that doesn't mean that you 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 cannot be open to other uh, um, initiatives on the contrary well, my last point is, what's next? Um, I think uh, the good thing about not, not being a specialist or a, a scholar in that field is that you are not um, 
you're not restricted by what's already established, the rules and the limits and the, the questions. So you, you can come up with a fresh, uh, fresh mind and you can look at the, the main objective of the field or what, what's the field for, the purpose of the field in, with, with fresh eyes. And uh, you can bring new tools, new ideas from other fields. So that's the way I, I see it. It's an opportunity uh, uh, that just needs, uh, as any other opportunity, uh, needs further development. That's just the process, uh, normal process of, of ideas. Mohammed, you were gonna comment? Yeah, just more comments. Sorry, um, uh, and uh, and uh, thank you, uh, brother Mustafa, here for uh, embracing the opportunity, embracing the challenge, and and putting ourselves in the in the stage of transformation. And by the way, this Horizon Academy is about transformation. So we without getting into the boundaries of the limitation, you cannot transform without getting this butterfly in the level to be imprisoned on his cocoon, it will not transform to this kind of beautiful creature that we are enjoying. And we need to get into that. We are looking at the level of limitation that we can get to see this is the door to move on for good, for good transformation, I mean. Uh, and and uh, just coming from this perspective here, um, uh, and to share with you also, it's not, uh, we're not specialists, that's true. We're not um, full timer on dealing with Islamic <laughs> teaching, that's true. Um, uh, bringing, bringing the input of PhD people as interviews. I run five to six interviews with PhD people, not PhD that are in the research, no. They already done their research and you stick with them and you take them for one to two hours just interview and you can feel how miserable this field is and how beautiful it looks from outside. That's all we know that is helpful and so on. You feel that they are stuck. You see, you see how they are looping through different methodology here and there just to make a case, just to move their study and most of them are personal driven. It is no formalized methodology that can help that shift, that can help that leap. They cannot, they, no, none of them admit that there is, there is good, stable, foundational methodology that helps them to make the maqasid practical. They are striving to make part of it practical and to see how they can make it practical. And they are even, even most of them, they are failing to make it practical and to tackle questions just as we, as Dr. Shahid. Dr. Shahid, for example, is one of them. He was, as his result, to, from his perspective and his studies, he's bringing uh, some side of limitation that we don't see it from his eyes, but we see what we struggled with. And you can connect the dot. Once you get some level of conclusion and you see some other people, are, how they are stuck, you can start connect the dot. There is, it's not only because of our limitation as a people, it's also because of the limitation of the field. And that we can confirm it. And this is one way how you can assess your result. At one point, you are coming up with a result. And once you see that type of result is coming from other ways, and they are multiple, and from people that they are specialists, and from the constraints that you are moving from your time, they are full timer, and they are specialists, and they are, what they are doing is that, and they are getting into the right, it's not almost the same type of conclusions, you can validate, oh, that's, that maybe makes sense. That the field, if I need to adopt it, if I need to take it further, I will not move in the same, same way. So that's, that's one of perspective. The third item that I have here, and I will stop, sorry about that. The third item I, I would like to bring here, if we want to try something else, we want to try it in different way. If we are trying it in the same way, maybe we, are, we will keep kind of doing this type of limitation there. And what I mean by that, if we want to try some level of involving the divine, valuing the divine in the life of the people, at least as a Muslim perspective, we need to get into the level of collaborating with new methodology, with new framework, and engaging other people delivering and engaging and doing that stuff. 
with them, with them. It's not something that we want to uh, hand off and stuff. No, we want some level of collaboration. What could be coming as material with different methodology? This is the second try that may be beneficial. And then that would be promising. I will not go to something not even promising. We need to look at what's there, what is promising, and engage with the people that they are eager to do work with you because you are open field, practical field, and close to the organization, close to the community, close to the practical question that you are dealing with uh, as, as, as a field. That's, I, I think oh, that's, oh, that's one way I think. I, I want to give uh, Dr. Hassan Bedran a chance to intervene. He's been attending the last uh, couple of sessions. I know he came in late. He didn't know about the series. Go ahead, Hassan. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Jazakallah khair uh, for, for this good, uh, good work. Uh, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, like uh, here we're getting ready to sleep. <laughs> it's, like, it's like almost 10.30. Anyway, um, uh, you know, I have, I have like, you know, I missed like, as you said, like many uh, sessions, uh, early sessions. Uh, I have two questions. One quick question first. Uh, are you talk when you say like when you talk about like maqasid? Are talking about maqasid of Sharia or maqasid of Islam? So the, this uh, distinction we've uh, tackled it in one of the sessions. Um, I guess both because uh, uh, Islam, part of it is Sharia. Yeah, exactly. And we're talking about maqasid of Sharia. Okay, so uh, I, I think it it will be more. I don't know that this is my perspective. Is like more appropriate to talk about maqasid al Islam because that's that's the you know the biggest umbrella. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing is like you know it's like a comment uh, you know like for for this pandemics you know like uh, the COVID nineteen. Uh, you know, one one of the impacts of this, you know, uh, pandemic on, on in the world is is like uh, uh, is uncertainty. You know, this is what what you hear from a lot of people. You know, one of the biggest impacts is like the uncertainty that people, you know, have because of the you know the 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 scale of the the problem, and because you know you know obviously also. A lot of people they have never faced like you know a pandemic, they have never been like confined, etc. So like what what are like aspects in um, you know in in the in the maqasid that can maybe help these people? Uh, like how how can we advise like you know people like this? How many want to take that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so that was um, th th that's that's uh, what we try to do in the whole series. <laughs> that's big question. That's the whole question that we did. It's like how we can make this maqasid helpful for the people in this situation of the maqasid. And as conclusion, can you go back to that? To that, uh, I will give you only the conclusion just to, to make to make it I mean a little bit faster here. But the conclusion that we came 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 at. It's just, oh, let's see how we can deal with the maqasid by valuing the divine perspective, valuing the divine input as a Muslim coming into this world and dealing with this challenge. So what we said, oh, as a mission, let's take the maqasid as support to fulfill this goal. And we wanted to fulfill the goal in terms of the individual level and in the collective level and in three, four dimension, including the intellectual, the emotional, the social and societal level. So this is kind of um, aiming as a dream, starting the session uh, series and then, then let's, uh, let's, let's get into it. So it's a life, uh, 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 can kind of, live show movie here and we went through those 12 weeks struggling battling bringing debating and hearing all that what's happening and uh, and and bringing new material as we are doing we are bringing new material because it was continuous production of what's happening in the pandemic so what's happened it it, it happened to us that uh, as maqasid 
it could help a little bit in terms of give you the legitimacy that don't get stuck only to your verses and to only to your prescription islamic pers perspective uh, embedded in the text that, that's, that's, that's one thing. It challenges you. You cannot do that. Maqasid field is coming to tell you, you cannot do that. If you want the Maqasid objectives, you need to look a little bit outside. Look at that and look outside. That's one of the challenges. And this is the value that brought. It's like if you am, we are advising as part of this conclusion, we are advising people, don't rely only to your spiritual and divine whatever understanding to start talking about what could be beneficial in the situation of the, the pandemic from Islamic perspective. This is limited. Second area, you, you, you don't need only to look at the context. You also, you also need to look at other human what they are doing, at their contribution, how they are approaching it from the spiritual level, a lot of religions at start they are doing a lot of experiment in spiritual level and you can learn a lot from that emotion intellectual and so on and then you need to bring that in your perspective you need to question it how you can make it more embedded in your maqasid framework this is a third dimension if you can do that which we 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 try to do and it was partially kind of uh, uh, helpful but what we felt it's like the Maqasid and Islamic perspective come into this context, cannot even question the status quo. All what is coming is good. All what we are doing, oh, we are justifying. Oh, this maslah is bigger than this maslah. Oh, look how the people are doing, are approaching the, the, the issue and how the balance between the harm. This is what we are talking about. You're talking about it from your perspective, from your corner and from your uh, head. Now people, they are experimenting. This is the limitation that we cannot tell people that is promising for you. If you take Maqasid, you can come up with that stuff. You cannot, at least uh, as experiment. That's, uh, I'm trying to um, make sure. I think we, um, we went over time a little bit, but it was worth it. But uh, before we let you go, I just wanted to um, uh, announce what will be the last session on Thursday. We've already got into the agenda of Thursday by starting to talk about lesson learned and uh, open discussion. But that second point is perspective in uh, perspective in the futures need more exploration. I think we touched base a little bit. So um, this goes both for the pandemic and for the maqasid. Um, uh, so jazakumullah uh, khairan for your uh, patience and for your contribution and participation. Let us talk to you inshallah on Thursday. And have a good night. Salam alaikum. Alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.